Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I've heard uh, a lot of commentary, and I'm just trying to, to sort things out in, in my own head a bit. But, um, you know, last year the um, deficit was $450 million. And anybody, you know, I know the, um, uh, the governor was elected, and, and he ran on the promise of no new taxes. That's what we heard from the governor on the entire series, no new taxes. And I remember all of our mouths almost hit the floor over at the state of the state when the first thing he did is he came out and he said, you guys have to go out and raise $450 million of new taxes on every single person that works in the state of West Virginia. We're going to die, he said, otherwise, if you don't go raise $450 million today, new taxes, that was 12 months ago, uh, Mr. President, the Senate stood strong on that. We didn't raise taxes on the backs of our teachers and our police and our service personnel. We were here for five months, but we didn't raise those taxes. We showed fiscal responsibility. We had to cut, scrimp, save, cut services, cut uh, positions, but we were able to not only balance the budget, but we took a $220 million deficit that we were supposed to be facing yet again for the fifth year in a row this year and turned that into a very small $27 million or so dollar surplus, first surplus we've had in five years. The hard work that this Senate has done has turned the tide for West Virginia. We are starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. We are starting to see some prosperity. Now, comments have been made about the budget and that the governor has people that puts that budget together. Anybody that's ever looked at that behemoth of a document knows no one man can possibly put a four plus billion dollar budget together it's far far too complicated but the budget is still a document of what you have and what you don't when each of us go home and and calculate our, our finances we know what's coming in and we know what's going out the budget this year is supposed to be around a 27 29 million dollar surplus that's what we're hoping by July we're supposed to have that surplus. Now, when you look into the accounts, when we went to finance yesterday and we said, what are the actual numbers? We, we all heard what the governor said, that all of a sudden $58 million appeared from somewhere. We went to those guys and we said, what, what, what are the numbers looking like? Or is there something new that we aren't aware of? They said, no, currently, currently, the state of West Virginia is still 29 million in the hole going forward we may not see any surplus whatsoever come july as of right now we're off track we're hoping january february numbers are looking but but we're struggling with what we got so we got to look at what's coming and what's going out we ask of those guys that know so much about the budget do you guys see something we're not seeing well we think Maybe that um, the road's bond and, and things are going to take effect. Well, that's, that's not what you bank your, your, your finances on. That's not if I've got to be responsible for my family at home, I'm not going to just be suspect that maybe I'll make money that I don't have. I want to bank my budget on money I know that I have. Because what happens if they're wrong? You know, if you... you <laughs> You know, the kids, uh, from time to time, they'll, they'll want to do a lemonade stand or a hot dog stand. They'll have all kinds of business ideas, and, and I'll say, well, what do you think you're going to make? Well, they'll have all kinds of grandiose ideas, what they think they might make, but that's certainly no guarantee of what they are going to get, if they get anything at all. I've heard a lot about out-of-state pay, and I, and I apologize for uh, being late here today, but um, as many of you know, I am a physician, and... and uh, you know, I try to get as many patients seen during this busy session that I possibly can. And a lot of those patients are, are people on PIA. And just yesterday, I had a retiree telling me that the problem is you've got to think about all the, the people, 
Senator, you can't think about just the teachers or the service personnel. What about us? We're on very fixed incomes. Now, PI has been good to us. She said she's gone 10 years with hardly a, a single bill, but her husband's still working. And they were offered to go out of state. He was offered $10,000 more plus a $15,000 moving allowance to move out of state. They said they had a home that was about 250000 They found a comparable home that was about 250000 And they were really contemplating moving out of state until they saw the property taxes in that state. They said for the same house, the property taxes was almost $1,000 more in the state of Ohio. And they didn't have near the health benefits that they do in the state of West Virginia on PEIA. That dwarfed any income that they were possibly making. So when you talk about going out of state, I don't want anybody to go out of state. I can go out of state. I get two and three job offers a week to go out of state. This, this is my state. This is home. I stay here. I sacrifice, serve uh, in public service because I want to try to make my home a better place. So you have to be fair in your discussions. When you talk about going out of state, you have to look at all things. Now, I, this is in no way uh, any type of speech saying that I don't want my teachers not making the national average or above. I do. I want, I, there would be nothing that would serve me better than walking out of public service knowing that our teachers, our state police were the best paid in the region. But, again, we have to be fiscally responsible and spend what we have. Mr. President, all I've heard from, from many dozens and dozens of teachers is that what brought them here was the fix for PEIA. And so I repeatedly ask, what, what is the fix for PEIA? And again, they agree. They would love to have a, an a increased income, but it's the PEIA. PI is set up in a plan of 80-20. The state has always funded their 80%. Health care, if, if you had $100 worth of health care, we pay 80, they pay 20. The problem is that health care just keeps climbing. It just keeps climbing. That's part of why I'm in the Senate, to try to look out after the citizens, to try to look at health aspects and, and bring it from a person that understands the industry so that, so that our citizens are best protected. Now, health care is $200. The state's still paying their 80%, but that 80% is now $160 worth on it, and the employees are $40. What is giving people, I think, the most heartburn is the sticker shock. A lot of our state employees don't have big incomes. So when you're talking about a copay going from $20 to $50 overnight, when you talk about deductibles raising $1,200 to $1,500 or $1,700, that, that, that's big numbers to somebody with minimal incomes. So I understand completely, and I struggle, what is the fix? The fix is going to have to be something that stabilizes those premiums. And I think that's exactly what you're trying to do, Mr. President, by saying what we're going to have to do for it. It's a complicated topic. I'm, I'm in health care. I, I don't have the answer. It's going to take time. But I think one, one very, very important point that is being missed is the governor has, and the legislature has approved the governor's plan to freeze PIA for a year and a half. Now, it's a complicated topic. The, the governor has already put a task force together to, to look at this. We're going to be back in session well before a year and a half. We have to be held accountable. Republicans, Democrats, Senate, House, we are responsible to, for the people that put us here. Twelve months is a long time, Mr. President. There's a lot that can be done in 12 months, and the people of West Virginia will have ample time to see that. What I hear when, when, when the crowd was out there and the, the union representatives went out and says, hey, we bumped you up a raise, they got booed off the stage because the citizens want a fix to PEIA. That's going to take some time. But we have given a solid promise to the people of West Virginia that over the next year and a half, PEI is fixed temporarily. But this, the, we will be back in session next year. You've got ample time to hold every single solitary person accountable if it is not fixed within the next 12 months, uh, myself potentially included. Your premiums are what you asked. The 
Senate President has offered far more funding than has ever been talked about today, this morning, to guarantee that those funds really could probably be stabilized far more than a year and a half. But we don't want stabilizations, we want to fix. I agree with you. But it's going to take time to figure out what that fix is. I think it's going to be a, a mechanism by which premiums can never jump. I, you know, I don't want milk or bread or anything else to go up, but health cost is one of those things. It's going to go up. The fix is going to be something to sustain that there's never a sticker shock increase in premiums. We all know health care is going to continue to climb. But at least for our state employees, if we can find mechanisms to put a, a guaranteed in code, codified way that those premiums can never give you sticker shock, that you can schedule a vacation and schedule a repair on your house and know that that's not all going to be uh, put you in the rears because all of a sudden your health insurance jumped out of the, out of the, out of the sky, then, then I think that's what, what we're looking for. And we've got ample time to do that. The task force, my understanding, is already being assembled uh, literally almost as we speak. Um, I think the plan to move forward to make sure the PI is stabilized till we can get this done is the right move, and I appreciate your leadership and the comments of all those in the Senate. Thank you, Mr. President.